Hi, welcome to this SQL tutorial video. And today we're going to look at, we're going to look at the results that get returned um, from SQL. And we're going to look at removing duplicates. And we're going to look at only showing a certain amount of results. So on screen, I've got um, a select star from my table here. Um, at the bottom right here, it shows me that there's 7,965 rows in my table. That's everything in my table. Here, this, <clears throat> this number here shows you the results of the current um, select that you've run. So if I were to add a condition here, um, and just put, if I run that, at the bottom right, we've got 1,005 rows. It's the same thing as if I just put count in here and ran my um, select it shows you here at the bottom how many rows have returned so with that in mind if i run this here we've got almost eight thousand rows in this table what i'm interested in is this column here and this column you can see the data there are duplicates of the same text in this column what i want to see is a list of this the results of this column, but removing all the duplicates. So only a single entry for each of the um, occurrences of the text. So first of all, let us return just this column. There's my column. Um, still almost 8,000 rows returned at the bottom right, you can see. Now we've got this keyword called distinct. And what distinct does is it simply removes duplicates of the data that's being displayed. So if I were to execute my select distinct command, you'll see now that there's just over a thousand rows returned and each of them is unique. Each of the entries is unique. So it is returning everything in this column, but it is removing any duplicates. Now, <clears throat> the way distinct works is if I just go back to select star distinct will return um, every unique row it's nothing to do with a particular column it's the whole row that, that is being returned so with my distinct uh, type column it returned me 1445 rows but if I were to add another column um, the folder column, we now get more rows. We get three, oh, just over 3,000 rows. That's because there are multiple artifacts here with different folders. So that return is unique, and that is unique, and that is unique. But in here, you can see that is repeated. So the distinct works against everything that you're showing so if i were to remove the distinct and run that um i'll just order by you can see there are three artifacts with this folder and here there are seven so adding the distinct removes all the duplicates based on the results, the full results being shown. So not just a single column in this case. Uh, it's useful, um, you know, for returning limited amounts of, of, of data and only unique data. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanted to go through is if we just go back to select star, uh, I'm gonna get rid of my order by just for the time being. Let's imagine this table is millions of rows um, long and it's you know, 10, 20, 30 columns wide. So it's a big, big table with lots of data. It may be that you do select star from this table and it takes a long time to eventually return all of the results. So what you are able to do is you're able to return a limited amount of data from this table. So you can say, just get me 10 rows rather than get me everything. And in that way, it will be returned much quicker. So the way we do that is we do select top 
and then whatever number we want. So in this case, I'll say it's like top 10 star. And if we run that, there's the top 10 rows uh, or maybe the top 20 rows. Then, I mean, that's fine. And, and it kind of returns you this subset of data so that you can look and see the makeup of the table. But you've got options here when you're doing your top 10. Right now I've got top 10 star, which is fine. But when it's returning everything, um, it will order, SQL will order by a column that it chooses when it runs. And in this case, it's this ID column here. But you can do an order by based on this top 10. So if I say order by um, ST type. So now we're seeing the top 10 uh, rows based on this type here. And I can change that by default. If you do an order by it's ascending, if I change it to descending. So maybe a sensible example would be you want to get the top 20 results based on a particular date. So maybe you want to get the most recent. So let us do that. Let us do ST date. Um, and ST date, because we haven't put ascending, it's going to show us the oldest first. So let's change it to descending. And that we're now getting the most recent entries um, based on this date. And with order by, we can add extra um, columns. So we can order by the name column as well. Um, so right now it's ordering by this. And now it's ordering by this. But you'll notice that you've got a C, then an M, then an A, then an N, then a P, then an A. You know, it all looks a little bit messed up. It's because it's ordering. There's two here for the 26th of June 2020. So it orders those two. Then there's however many six there from May 2020. So then it's ordered those. Then it's come to this date of which there's much more. And so you've got an order of those. And if I were to change this to be... Um, to be descending this doesn't change but this changes so now instead of it being cm it's mc and here you see we've got um v to a instead of a to v and now we're starting at the z's here in the order by so that's the end of this video um showing you how to limit data um using your select I hope it made sense. If you've got any comments, uh, all feedback's appreciated. Thanks a lot for your time. See you next time.